So that's been an interesting morning and yesterday as well, hasn't it? Uh, trying to work out how to measure uh, soul or spirit or love, especially if it's formless. So how do you measure something which is, doesn't have form and yet we spend our whole lives trying to work everything out by definition? It's like a total contradiction. Uh, but somehow or other we just keep doing it for whatever reason. Um, so my talk is about science and the spiritual and the nonsense. Of course the nonsense is the fact that those two are, are inseparable. And um, as for myself, I specialise in feng shui. Uh, I go into, um, I work with corporations, houses, people, individuals, whatever, uh, time. Um, it's a shame we didn't call time something else so we wouldn't have to debate whether it existed or not. So, um, my special interest is human behaviour, language of energy, uh, symbolism and how that influences us and that's what my talk's about today. So I'm going to cover a couple of different things that hopefully will correlate together. Um, and in that process we have to consider diversification, right? Because until we understand diversification we're always going to function from a separate point of view. And as long as we're functioning from a separate point of view, we're practicing separation, segregation, trying to understand unity, which is never going to happen. So we're at a dead loss before we start. Uh, do not let anyone tell you something doesn't exist just because they cannot see it. And we saw this with Mellenbrock. By the time he put the computers together, we saw something that we could never see before. And, and uh, that's what we're doing in life, aren't we? We're constantly upgrading and updating our knowledge all the time. The problem is we get fixed on, fix, fixated on something called knowledge, which we end up calling knowledge, and that screws us over. Science, the intellectual and practical activity encompassing the systematic study of the structure of behaviour of the physical and natural world through observation and experiment. The world of science and technology. Well, Observation is how we understood science in the beginning before we got into machinery um, and uh, facts. I saw it, I, saw the, I had the experience, I saw the result, and so therefore it became a fact. Now we have to quantify it, if we can't quantify it, my observation doesn't exist. Uh, that's crazy. Every thought that creates is a technology. Isn't that interesting? We have to start reeling is that uh, learning how to live with joy in this world is a technology. It's not just in a machinery, we function like a technology. Uh, let's face it, we're all 3D batteries. Every thought that creates is a technology and we have to understand that. The moment we understand that, we have a better chance of understanding who we are. Otherwise, we're still practicing separateness. Saying that feng shui is about harmony and creating a pleasant space is like saying medicine is about taste. Feng Shui is not about uh, the placement of furniture, it's about the placement of a human being with its surrounding environment. And then the understanding of that surrounding environment to understand how it influences your thinking and your behaviour patterns, your health, your welfare, your evolution. That's if this thing here can ever evolve, which is another conversation of course. Um, Direction is a subtle energy. Can uh, Julie come over here for a minute? So I'm going to do a couple of demonstrations. Um, I'm going to muscle test Julie. So what I'm going to do is just face Julie in a direction. Say your name is Julie. Julie. Muscle test her. She's nice and strong. So face that direction. Just look in that direction for me. And hold the Julie. And turn this way. And turn this way. Can't do it. So I go into a corporation, reposition everybody at their desk, and guess what happens? Productivity goes up. It's very hard to measure productivity, but what they have been able to measure is that, I, that it reduces the mistake rate by 50%. Now imagine every woman who gave birth to a child faced the direction for that child to move into a positive to breathe that energy which is positive coming towards them, the moment their first breath happens, what would we have? Rather than Higgly Piggly or any Mini Mighty Mo. 
We just changed the whole concept of the way we thought and function. And it's so bizarre and yet it's so simple. And the reason for that is we're so busy looking for facts we can't see the writing on the wall. We can't really see what's going on because we're stuck in facts rather than who we are. Thank you. So there'll be a couple more. Okay, so you've all seen these symbols. And some of you may like them and some of you may not. But each one of these symbols is exactly the same. Uh, this is an Indian one. This is Buddhism. This is Chinese. This is Doctor Strange movie. This is the early heaven, later heaven sequence in Feng Shui, and that is the first compass ever invented on the planet. So what is that? We look at that and we see it as what? The same way we see the world. We function in a 3D world and we see everything from a 2D perspective. That's crazy. We're already separate. So most cultures function if, with the two symbols in the, that were uh, through, throughout all indigenous cultures and that is the square and the circle. So the square in this particular case represents earth and the circle represents heaven and on a compass this spins because it's on top of the earth. Over here we have a swastika and over here in the Indian culture we have a swastika and then over here with the number system in the 3x3 three three magic square which I'm standing on here right now because it's on this carpet pattern is exactly the same as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 same over here look at this, the 9 sections this is a representation of that and then over here we have it written in uh, ancient language in a yang line and a yin line, or the way that a lot of languages were written initially. The interesting thing is that here's the swastika. This is the one that um, nobody likes. They're identical. You cannot have a different swastika. It's just upside down. Or it's turned sideways. If I take that there and spin it up, I have that line there. If I take this line here, and move it across, I have it over here. The swastika doesn't change. It's the same symbol. And the interesting thing is, why was it in these cultures in the first place? Well, that's because one, two, three, four is the four elements. It's the mathematical equation that was secret to showing where the four elements were. So in other words, how do I have an energy, how do I have a singularity that creates something. It's an immaculate conception. And if it's not, then we have to put two items together to create a third, to create an energy. So there are a lot of people who think that as, uh, the Chinese esoteric scientists or metaphysics is a dead science. Everything is dead until it's activated. How do you activate it? You put something else with it. It's very simple. So, this is the symbol, and the interesting thing is the number of elements. We're trying to understand where we fit in this, in this symbolism, and so we have the four elements, one, two, three, four. The interesting thing is that earth is hidden within uh, fire. It was never ever part of a fifth element. And if we look at the Ayurvedic system, then this is um, this, one, this one here, 4 9. So that's called metal in Chinese, it's called ether in something else, or space, or whatever. But all the cultures have these things, they're just named differently. So we think that they're different until we understand the symbolism, because symbolism is the same language right across the whole planet over all time. So I'm going to bring symbolism in. The other interesting factor is, um, there it is up there. One six equals water, two seven fire, three eight equals wood, four nine equals metal. And then the interesting thing is, here we have a two five eight. And so the five elements are really nine sections because we have a yin and yang element 
structure within it. In other words, what's the difference between a small bush and a large tree? One's a yin aspect and one's a very yang aspect. The other aspect here is just to understand that if I looked at the metal side of things, a small metal might be a piece of jewelry and a large metal might be, might be uh, something really super in size. Or if I looked at water, a small lake in compared to an ocean. So we see the differences so that we can explain what the differences are. In other words, it's the same but in a different context. The other thing here is if we do have the square and we're on a, trying to understand where we are in the picture, then here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Interesting in the temple that we just saw, the front entrance was a hexagon, the number eight. So we see in all cultures the sixes and the eights. How do we get around to that? Well, we assuming that I often see the flower of life and I'm wondering why is that relevant when I know that I'm an earth creature and I'm bound to the earth. So somewhere I'm into one of these here. So I have four, four elements, the five element. So a lot of us may think the fifth element is mankind, but the fifth element is that we are five different elements. We think differently. We just saw that in the last lecture. We function different. We may be different. We heard that in the chakras. I may have this, need this chakra. You may need that chakra. And so we, there's a difference within the similarity. So the sixth element may be this one here, which is spirit or soul or love or the energy that we can't define. That gives us the hexagram that we see. And the reason why I'm do talking about this is because we have, as uh, some um, gentleman claim, uh, has put a great image on, he's called it a cultural portal. And a cultural portal is an existing idea that's here before we are born that we take on board and become. And then we wonder why we're part of this collaboration because we've taken on all these ideas that somebody else has had, the, you know, the company, the parents, the education, whatever, now we're the slave or we're not the leader of our own destiny, we're the, we're the follower of someone else's. So the reason I do this about the millennials is because of judgment. We've heard about judgment. So what does judgment do? And I'll get into that a little bit more. This is an octagon, a cave in China, discovered uh, that was built around the 600s. And interesting, his Buddha, or some figure, it's the not correct figure now because the other one was destroyed. You'll notice all the other figures here. Sitting directly under this hole. What is this hole? Infinite energy source, spirit, soul, coming directly to you directly to you, the same as uh, which we just saw right here in the centre, because all of these are representations of mankind and this is where the energy comes in to flow out to the differences that we are. So interesting enough, if I want to understand life, I can't look at something that someone's created now because it's probably a defined representation of what I think it is from what it really was, but when I go back into the ancient cultures or traditions, I can see what they discovered without interpretation, what they observed. And why am I bringing this up? Well, just think about this whole, if this is where source comes to us, why is there no major organ in my body in my central line? Because if I did, if I'm the energy, I can now cannot get through to the other part of my body because it's blocked. So if you have a kitchen in the middle of the house or something in the middle of your house, you'll be wondering why you have a health problem to shift it. It's really simple because you're blocking the energy from flowing everywhere. See, the centre is always the centre. 
no matter what it is, my body, my house, my building, my city, my ideas, they're always there. So I'm going to talk about what I've been doing with this understanding of energy. And so I've created a formula of salt, Himalayan salt and um, Israeli Dead Sea salt and other salts because I believe in the Trinity aspect of life and everything I see is around a Trinity. So I have a salt, I have an oil and I have essential oil. And what happens is I put a formula together of salts, a formula together of carrier oils and a formula of essential oils all based on the same elemental quality either um, earth or water or metal or whatever it may be. Julie, can I have you for a minute, please? And what happens is, what happens when I put one element with the same element to the same element to the same element? I have group consensus and that energy now expands. It's a bit like you put a whole bunch of people together with the same idea, you can have a riot or you can have a party. It's the same principle. Great, let's have a look. So, I'm going to test Julie again. Okay, hold your arm up under your name. Thank you. Hold Julie, hold it up nice and strong. That's good. So, I'm thinking, okay, I've made up a salt and I'm going to place the salt on there and let's see whether or not that salt makes it stronger or reduces. And what that salt tells me is which one is relevant to her right now. And of course I have each bag is made up of the, the five elements. Much stronger. Good. And one more. It's good. So there's only one weak one here. Hold that up. Thank you. So it's weak even with the salt. Isn't that interesting? But the one that she needs right now, not the one that she needs on a permanent basis because we're in the, other, we're in the world of change, is yesterday I said, okay, uh, you look like a head tripper, let's try it. And what does this colour look like? The colour of a base energy, base chakra. And why do we need a base chakra? Because we need to function in the practical world. Because we can't do it in our head. All right, you can have that. Thank you very much. Don't go away. Put it here. Put it here. I need you for another test. And so, working with that, I've worked out a uh, system of um, using the same concepts now, putting it into symbolism to see whether or not I can do exactly the same. So, I, I took a bunch of symbolisms. The intriguing story of the elements, the new guide to the building blocks of the universe. Because as uh, Mr. Sinclair said yesterday, I only want to do what works. I don't want to make it a theory. So I've put a bunch of symbols together. Now let's look at this. If I test Julie, my name's Julie. Hold it up. Maybe she's going to die. It's good. So, hold my iPhone. She's weak. Take my phone away. Think of something negative. 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 Can't do it. <laughs> Hold the iPhone. The symbols. Think of something negative. Overcome the negative. Overcome the iPhone. Overcome the negative. Overcome, overcome the iPhone. How does that happen? Well, because symbolism is really about energy. The thing is, it's not just energy. If we keep thinking energy and vibration and uh, um, frequency, how do we... It's so open, we can't learn how to function with it or what to do with it in ourselves. Thank you very much. And so, we have to use the elements or something similar to break it down into components so we better understand ourselves better understand the universe, the same as trying to understand our individuality because if we do function with all the archetypal types like there's four types of people or there's ten types of archetypes or twelve look around the room and four of us are all the same of course it's a load of crap it's just not the case so there's this individuality that exists within everything 
So here we have the four symbols. Now how do I test this to see if it's real? I used to buy a feedback machine. So a biofeedback reflexology machine which shows me the differences. So based on, a, based on a female image taken at this time, this is what the aura looked like. When I added the salt, this is what it looked like. When I added the t-shirt, this is what it looked like. And this is what they looked like together. This is the change that happened just in the aura structure straight away based on this $10 thousand um, software machine to measure the aura. Now is that good enough or not? Because I did the muscle test observation, it says it works, but I don't believe it because we function from a sceptical point of view because I don't have any real facts. So now I have a real fact but it's still sceptical. So then I moved into the chakra system and measured the chakra system. So on this side over here, this is the base reading. Look what happened on this side. The red shows the reduction. And the interesting thing, the bottom three chakras all went up. The ones that we need to function in the practical real world. And uh, over here, when the t-shirt went on, the four shows the increase in all the percentages. The lowest percentage now is 44. Over here it's 29. So this is the elevation, this is the balancing. Because if I'm too high in my upper chakras, I need to come down in order to function. Otherwise I'm a head tripper, I don't know how to function in the real world. I become a victim. I become subservient. I'm no longer my own leader. And of course, now I have another, another um, um, what do you call it, uh, reference to go on. But is that enough? So now this is the chart that shows the different organs. We've got uh, small intestine, liver, heart, shoulder, eye. This is what a normal chart looks like. And this is the chart. This is the base chart over here. This is the t-shirt chart. And this is the salt chart. And I'll put some colors up here just so you can see the differences. So let's just take a look. The heart here, the line is just above the midline. Over here, the heart is uh, up here. It's below. So the base line, it was low. The t-shirt went up and the salt that went down. Why did it go down? Because we all know that if you have a heart condition, you should not take a salt bath. Now let's look over here. We have the colon, uh, yellow colon. It's just, just above, on the line, and just below there. So there's not much difference there. Let's see, uh, thyroid. Look at, oops. Look at the thyroid over here. It's way up on the baseline. The thyroid over here, it's come down a little, and the thyroid over here is basically about the same. So the salt or the t-shirt brought that thyroid function down, and we all know that we need to have that thyroid not functioning out of control, especially at the top of its capacity. Uh, what else can we look at? Uh, reproductive organs, reproductive organ, reproductive organ, slightly better, slightly better, much better here. Uh, sorry, same there, a little bit there. Now they've even developed where this is in percentages rather than this uh, line factor because this is um, not the latest. They've realized that you can't read it quite as well. Um, and so I just took out some of them, but I wanted to show you some of the different, look, the kidney here is on the line, the kidney here is, sorry, above the line, on the line, and the kidney over here is above. So it brought the uh, kidney down. In other words, it's looking to balance the energetic factor. If it's too high to bring it down, if it's too high to lift it up. The diff so for, as an individual, we may need balance to function, but if we have balance in life, there's no movement. That's why in the Chinese system, the, um, they'll always look at the lucky numbers, are the uneven numbers, because it's going to move back into balance, to constant change. So we know that we need constant change in order to function and move forward in life to develop. The interesting thing is, while we're trying to evolve, can this creature vessel evolve when we're running on 100%? And then the other concept is, can my ego evolve? And if I am practicing spirituality, is it my spiritual ego deluding me that I'm actually spiritual? 
So we have to look at that concept as well, and there's a whole bunch to it. And I want to thank you very much. Any questions? Thank you. Yes. I was just wondering with the t-shirt, the way it's symbols, what was exactly that? Those symbols? The symbols that I had on there were placed on the t-shirt. So it's not just a placement, it's specific placement to what? If it takes two energies to come together, the t-shirt's just 100% cotton. So the symbols on the t-shirt, if I measure that t-shirt on its own, nothing happens. If I put it on my body, I have the second energy to activate. See, we have to activate something in order to have a change. A man and a woman creates a child. That's an activation. What's an activation? Acceler an attraction? An acceleration. If we're trying to accelerate, we need to expand ourselves. Does that help that? It does, yes. Yes. So what's the uh, arrangement that you have on the t-shirt? Is there any particular... Absolutely. Matrix? It has to be arranged according to my energetic body. Right. And so, is that done individually, or how do you mean individually? Sorry. Well, if you're, if you've got a T-shirt, are you thinking of different kinds of individuals that would benefit by particular arrangements? Yep. So the salts are made based on your birth date. If I make them customized, otherwise they're generalized, muscle tested, then it's about the energy that you need right now, because we are a uh, five element person, right? So I had a couple made. And it looks like this if you want to see it. So I drew some designs myself and I'm playing around with it. And then they're also on the back as well. And they're also on the sleeve. So the idea is to place them uh, under, by understanding my, the energy of the human body and understanding the energy of the symbolism, I know where they need to be specifically placed on the body, on the, on the shirt, so that when I put it on, it activates me. Because even when I'm... I uh, had the salts tested, there's nothing. The moment it touches the body, it activates the two. It's the one plus one equals one. Again. I mean, that is life. The one plus one equals one. That's how we function. So how do we measure one when it's formless? We really have to understand that concept. It's the same. Formless is consciousness. How do I define that and measure that? Love is... As we said, it's formless. How do we measure that? You know, it's unconditional. That's what it means, formless. Can you see a little bit more about the measurements that you show? Those are from a device? Uh, that's a device. Yep, that's... That's... Um, let's see... Sorry. That's... Uh, this is the device here. So you've got gold plated for the hands to measure the body. Over here you have the organs. Is the the body here? I think SciTech has one of those. Um, no, they don't. No? Okay. It's a, uh, it's $10,000 and upwards because it's pure gold. That's expensive. It is similar. They say it's not similar to the Rife, but um, their measurement goes through there into the software and they've um, perfected it. It's German. It's about 18 years in the process now. Okay. There's not that many around. I can't find a lot of information about it. And that was the perfect question that you would ask. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Is that right? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.